My sister died in 2008. Why did this happen? How did I not be able to stop it? How can I not see it happen? And I realized Hello again, everybody. It's Dr. G from FCMW on The Council with Dr. G. Um, our, only our second episode here, and I have some exciting guests for you today. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, born and raised in uh, Newark, New Jersey, then come down here in South Florida with a mission to improve ourselves. My family brought us down and ended up going to medical school in Guadalajara, Mexico, then to Ponce, Puerto Rico, and I made a full circle right back down to Hollywood, Florida. When I got here, I decided mm, we need to do better with our health care. So let's go ahead and, and increase access to the whole community. No matter if there's you know, high economic status, um, in, in impoverished economic status, and everywhere in between, everyone deserves to be um, plugged into the health care um, facilities and health care um, apparatus, if you may. Um, so what we did was we decided we're going to go ahead and mine out all the best people that we can find and improve um, access to health care, access to health care services, and hopefully in the end we are going to go ahead and improve health care uh, disparities um, between different communities in South Florida. And then with that vein, we started Consult with Dr. G. And I, today, we're going to bring on two very special individuals. And they are the Black Yogis of South Florida. Ms. Kiana and Ms. Jasmine have a very special thing going on. This past weekend, I was privileged to be invited to be a vendor at one of their events at the Aventura Nike. And there I saw something that I didn't expect. I saw a community of people of different shades, sizes, everything. Um, working together as one on different levels of yoga and it was almost a spiritual event. I am impressed by what they've built over the last two years and if you know anything about small business you know a black woman, two black women, holding on to a small business for more than two years is not an easy task. So here today I want to introduce you to Miss Kiana and Ms. Jasmine, <laughs> the Black Yogis of South Florida. How are you guys doing today? Good. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. I know. Every time somebody introduces us, I'll be wanting to cheer behind it. Like, I feel like it comes as with a natural. <laughs> sure, as you should. So could you tell me a little bit more about yourself, Ms. Kiana? How did you make this journey to yoga? When did you start? I started yoga um, over a decade ago at work. When I was looking for different modalities for um, exercise and once I got on my mat I realized that yoga was so much bigger than exercise and stretching um, and I saw the mental physical spiritual connection and I just wanted more of it and so um, I was privileged to have a yoga class available at work and so that was my introduction to it and I found that when I took yoga midday my second half of the day was so much better. I didn't need a pick-me-up. I didn't need coffee. I didn't need, it was like a nap. It, it, it gave me like a second wind and um, it helped me to connect with myself in a whole nother way. And fast forward to now, I actually do teach a corporate yoga class <laughs> midday. And so it's amazing to be able to have um, the opportunity to give back in the way that I was introduced to yoga. Wow, wow. So something that you began as maybe just a health uh, aspect of your life, trying it out, ended up being uh, an integral part of your daily routine and now your business. That's, um, that's great to be able to find something that you love so much that you do every day and also enrich your body and your mind and your soul. That's it's a win-win. That's a win-win <laughs> <That's a win -win laughs> for sure. For sure. And you, Ms. Jasmine, how, are, how did you find your way to yoga? I, um... I started practicing over 10 years ago and one day I was just feeling honestly miserable mentally and like emotionally and so I was looking for an outlet trying to find different ways to kind of release it because I felt like something was stuck in my body that I couldn't get out and I didn't know why 
And um, a friend of mine told me about a yoga class and I went and it was phenomenal. And ever since then I practiced and I was like, I was already getting my master's in uh, clinical mental health. And I was like, oh, this is like a good bridge for both mental health and the physical health. And um, from there, I just took off with it. I started taking the classes and then I got my certification. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing to think that you were looking for something to you know, release some emotional, mm -hmm. emotional issues and ended up finding something spiritual and connecting your mental health and your spiritual health together mm -hmm. and improving both at the same time. That's... That's, uh, that's amazing that yoga can even do that. That's amazing right. anything can do that, but yoga, um, just holding poses, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I'm sure there's a lot more to it than holding poses, but that's amazing that they could do that for you, and I'm glad it did it for you. Me actually. too. <laughs> right, right. I feel so much more, I feel free. I feel free from that, yeah. Okay. So, I don't know, that's what it did for me. That's great, that's, <laughs> that's great. That's like somebody else gotta have this too. So. Right, right. Let me ask you a question, uh, Miss Kiana. Where do you see um, yoga in this community going in the next, um, you know, in this year for 2024? I mean, what are your goals for your company um, in, for yoga in this community? I think yesterday was a great glimpse into where we're going. We had a sold out class at Nike yesterday. And what I'm always amazed at is the amount of times that we meet people who are trying yoga for the very first time. And so what that shows us is that there's even more people to reach. And so that is my goal to get more people exposed to yoga and to you know, break some of the stereotypes that people may have or some or help to, you know, help people to get past some of the barriers that they may face and even trying it. And so I think getting more more first timers out there is awesome because then they become practicing yogis oftentimes mm -hmm. once they have given it a try. Um, and I think another big part and an integral part of our growth and our development and who we are as an organization is community and partnerships. And so I see for this year, for sure, many more community partnerships, us continuing to expand our network because our organization is even bigger than yoga. We like to have networks with people such as yourself so that people can get the full scope of their wellness and their well-being and so and we also like to to reach the full the entire family so from children all the way through the elderly so creating more and more opportunities to make sure that we're reaching our full demographic wow wow so so that what if i'm hearing you correctly what what i heard from you through that throughout that answer was community um, you want to reach everyone as young as possible to as old as possible that wants to get into yoga. And not only that, you want to incorporate bigger entities into bringing us together, um, as evidenced by you reaching out, or I don't know, if they reached out to you, hopefully they did, that would be awesome. Reach out to you. Um, Nike, Nike is not a small corporation. That's not a small feat, what you guys pulled off yesterday, which is very, very impressive. So community, a sense of community is something very big for you. I can tell that, you know, that's something that you want to do and continue on. Is that, would that be accurate? Yes. <laughs> Great. And you, what, do you, what would you like to see yoga and the way you guys practice yoga go in the next, in 2024? What are your goals for your company? I want, I like the, the energetic and like you said, it was a spiritual thing and I felt that too. And every time we get together, it's like this energetic healing that comes to our village, to our community, and everybody gets to grow differently mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, on every level. Because our vendors got to benefit from it, from every center. And it just, it felt holy. I like, I ain't gonna lie. I it didn't want to say it, but. It did, yeah, it, it did. really did. Like the, the space for it. And everybody, like one lady cried, especially when we did the, the breath work part. And I know that she needed that. You know, needed that release, and I hope that each person that comes there, they can get what they need right. on every level. And I like to see more healing, more people being able to be free from the things that are holding them stagnant. Um, I like to see us get funding because we really are passionate about this, and we want to do this full time. I like to see us be able to really divulge our time. We do it now, but just holistically be able to commit to it. Um, in a way that allows us to be free from a typical, you know, nine to five. Um, yeah, and I want to see children benefit and it evolved beyond us. So we share the wealth with other yoga teachers. So it's not just about us. It's about other yoga teachers sharing their business, sharing their knowledge and their gifts as well. It's a sharing 
community, you know, so I want to see it fall past us. 100%. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. I want to see, I want to see exactly what you want to see. I want to see our kids, along with football, mm -hmm. cheerleading, it should be yoga um, in, in the schools. I mean, it, it'll, it, I believe it'll help center our children, uh, make them more well-rounded. Um, and, and more spiritually connected to themselves and, yeah. you know, individuals as they grow up. You know, that's the type of thing that I would like to see in my son, mm -hmm. five-year-old kid. If he's doing something like that at that age, I have more confidence that, you know, he'll be, you know, a more centered and more well-rounded kid when he, you know, man, when he grows yeah. up someday. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. I want to share with you something that I think I, I came up to you um, after the, um, the event. Mm -hmm. um, and I... It was, my, it was my sentiment, so I, I don't want to put anything that you said out there, but what I said, okay. I'm going to put what I said out there. And I am one of the ones that was back the, in the back that did tear up when you said what you said. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that to you yesterday because we never know what other people are going through. And when you said that, you know, you know fighting your inner, you know, comp, the, 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 the things that kill your confidence, mm -hmm. um, to fight that battle is one of the hardest battles to fight. Um, it's not the, it's, you know, we have enemies, external enemies, um, and we have, you know, people that come in to attack us. Those fights, those battles are easy to win, or you could just run away. Hard to run, run away from your own thoughts mm -hmm. of negativity and, and things that kill your own confidence. And I believe that those things drive depression and suicidal ideation in our community, which runs rampant. I see it every day mm -hmm. with my patients. Um, and I believe that what you do, what you guys offer to the community is more than just an activity. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, another, it's another way that I can help offer, this is why again why we connect, is to offer my, my patients in a different way that's not medication, that's not you know, someone, a stranger, trying to you know, impose some sort of idea or trying to draw out things that maybe not be there but they can help to learn how to fight these inner battles that some of, you know, some, of, some people in our community just don't win, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're, I see you both as a, a I don't want to say this is a tool in my tool belt type thing, mm -hmm. you know, Batman and I got tools. <laughs> but um, what I mean to say is that someone I can call on for those who just, one of the biggest things that I hear from the patients that suffer from mental health is I don't like the way the medications make me feel. Mm -hmm. And it breaks my heart because as an internist, that's what we work with most of the time. You know, I rely on, you know, consultants like I call you guys consultants like yourselves to work with other things to to help my patients through, you know, dark times. So that's what I was trying to get to yet with you yesterday, that we never know what other people are battling, what inner demons are battling. And that inner demon can be so, so present. Mm -hmm. ever present and there's no way getting away from it but it, that's all I had to say about that I don't want to no you know, it's fine it's, you it's can exactly. share my that's message exactly. I'm very vocal about yeah. it right right so you know yeah. I you know I do I do we all have these issues mm -hmm. you know some are bigger some are small so having someone like you guys you know people like you that that are willing to help people through these things without medications is is is, a, is not a small thing it's a village though you know like yeah. we all need somebody to hold us up at times, even when we're not falling, sometimes we need, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a, that's a word right there. Even when we're not falling, sometimes we still need to be held up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have one, another question for you. Um, I've asked you about where you would like to see your company and yoga in our community this year. Another thing that we should always consider, well, I believe, I, not we should always, let me take that back. I always consider is where my legacy will be. You know, what will happen after I'm long and gone, long gone, right? What will happen to what I'm building here at FCMW? Um, what will happen with my family? What will happen with my son? How will they remember me? What do you want to see happen with the Black Yogis of South Florida 10 years after, you know, when you are unfortunately long gone from this earth? Where, what, where would you like to be, see Black Yogis be? of South Florida? I would like to see us be, <clears throat> to expand well beyond South Florida. I mean, and we have, we have people who participate in other ways, whether it be through our virtual offerings or other yoga teachers who live in different um, cities and even countries 
who love the fact that they can see yoga um, in this way and see yoga, mm -hmm. see brown people, see black people moving and flowing and growing together. And so I think that our, our impact ex continuing to expand beyond South Florida, definitely. Um, us being a household name as a, a hub of resource, people to know like, hey, I might not know, you know, a therapist. However, if I go to them, they might, they, you know, they might can put point us in the right direction or I might not know a nutritionist, but I'm sure that if I ask black yogis, they know someone mm -hmm. that they can refer me to. Because sometimes that's like the strongest um, push for people to get assistance is someone being able to, to point them. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of resources. We have the internet and who knows what we'll have in mm -hmm. 10 years after mm -hmm. we're gone, mm -hmm. but it's nothing like a personal recommendation. And so that's why we're really big about like community building and actually getting out there and going to a lot of community events and making those connections. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You mirror a lot of the things that I want to see in my company, in my, in my, in my services, in our clinic here, mm -hmm. that I would like to be a point for, you know, of connection, a touch point, I like to call it, for different services. And that's why, you know, I put myself out there to meet more people like yourselves so that when someone comes to me, I can give that personal referral. That's, that's exactly what we're trying to build here at um, FCMW. Yeah, I think she said, I think he said it all honestly, but I do like, I would like to see the generational growth so that even when we're gone, the people under us are gone, the youth are still, the generation is still kind of holding on to the values of community, of love, of joy, of fun. Because we do a lot of things that feel spiritual and stuff, but we also like to have a lot of fun. <laughs> you saw us. And so, you saw us. <laughs> yeah, we like to have fun. And we want people to remember their joy and remember love, remember community. And that goes through like sharing that. When, you, when we get healed, as adults, we, we can now raise our children in a different environment. Now children can raise their children in a different environment. And like joy just spreads, you know? So I like to see that keep going. More life, more love, more, I don't know, just more energy. So, but I think he right. said it all. Right. Yeah. I heard you say love four times in that answer. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to choose to take And she away. got four okay. heart tattoos. <laughs> She got four heart tattoos. Four heart tattoos, and you said love exactly four I said times. Four we'll, times. When we run it back, we'll see. Ah, but I'm pretty sure you I said it. It's gonna be a little long way before y'all cut me off. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I, I think I, from from your answer, you want to see the community, you want to yeah. see joy, and you want to see obviously, you want to see more love in your oh, community. You want to yeah. see. There's nothing wrong with that. There's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I and I believe that you know love and 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 and, and health, you know joy. Um, go hand in hand. Yeah. Improving your health, improving your happiness. Mm -hmm. you, you know, stress is one of the main killers of mm -hmm. many of our people um, in cardiovascular health, stroke, um, diabetes, obesity, all those th all these things. These things feed and come from mm -hmm. um, stress as one of the main um, drivers of these things. So, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely on for the love. I love it. Love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys have any questions for me? Any anything you'd like me to you know? Express or ask, you know, anything, anything at all. Hmm. No, I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot. If you don't have any, I probably could put, come up with another one for you. <laughs> oh, no, I could always come up with a question. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, what are some of the goals that you have for our community when you look at, like, overall health of our community? What, what do you see now and what would you like to see differently in the people that come, in, come into your office? Great question. One of the goals... I have for our community when they come into my office and when I meet them out is information. Access to information. Not just um, information about themselves, but information about for, them, for their families. Because I think the issue with, one of the issues with our community is um, we don't get enough information to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have information, you're just guessing, mm -hmm. period. And sometimes the information that we get is just totally wrong, or we've been lied to, or you know we're getting it from the wrong sources. I want to be a point of good information, um, thorough information, information that's valuable, not only to my patient that's sitting in front of me, but also patients that you know that I'm not, I'm not touching. You know, I, I consider everybody who's around my patient a possible new patient or someone that can benefit from the information that I give them. So I, when I pour information into my patients, I'm looking to, you know, enrich 
um, that in the individual and also the people around them. Mm -hmm. So this is another reason why um, I've decided to start this podcast, right? To put out information. And today's information is that the black yogis of South Florida are a viable way to treat your mental, physical, and emotional health. Mm -hmm. Straight up, without medication. Great, you don't like the way it makes you feel? Here's an option. So I'm like, I, I fashion myself to be a fine waiter here, and this is a great restaurant, mm -hmm. right? I know the menu back and forth. I know what's, you know what's fresh from the market, and I know your tastes. I know what you like and what you don't like and what you have going on. And I show you the menu and I give you all the choices with no filter. So that way you can make a better decision on what you want off of the menu. And I'm not pushy at all. And I'm gonna let you try anything you want and open up your palate. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, will, I, I want to be the guy, not the doctor, the guy that has information about health, healthcare access, um, healthcare services. That's what that's what I want to see about. That's what I want to see FCMW grow into the point of information for this community. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's good. It's, a, it's my dream. Yeah. We'll see if we can make it happen. Not if you are yeah. making it happen. Yeah, we're making it, we're making it happen. Yeah, we're yeah. making it happen. We're making I have it another happen. question for you. Absolutely. <clears throat> that should be Barbara Walters. Uh, give me uh, a mic. Yeah, <laughs> so. So what, what sparked your interest in medicine from the beginning and where, how has that shifted into what keeps you interested now or is it the same? That's a very good question, <laughs> an excellent question. When I was a kid, um, I wanted, when I'm six years old, as far as back as I can remember, the first thing I wanted to be was a ninja. <laughs> I wanted to be a ninja. But then as I grew up and, and realized that that was just not you know, something that could happen. It could happen, but not something that made sense. Um, I can remember going to the doctor and having him make me feel better. Um, my sister and I, um, we both would go to the doctor and we enjoyed the experience. He was a very good doctor, um, a pediatrician. That was, you know, well, that's where I want to be, a doctor. Didn't have a model, didn't know how to get there. But eventually, um, an uncle came into my family and gave, us, gave me a bit of a map. That's how I ended up in Guadalajara, Ponce, back home. Along that road, unfortunately, my sister died in 2008 of a, of a myocardial infarction. Super healthy, young lady like yourselves, 27 years old, mm. and passed away. Um, my focus changed at that moment. I was already... You know, I was already um, an MD. I, I had graduated. I had just gotten married. And five months, three months later, she passed away. And my whole focus changed. Why did this happen? How did I not be able to stop it? How can I not see it happen? And I realized that the reason, well, one of the reasons that this may have happened was because the people that saw her didn't see her. So... I made sure that my focus would be on that. I appreciate your vulnerability. Yes, thank like, you for sharing that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you tearing up might make me cry too. Ooh. But that's, that's important about yeah. being seen. Yeah. I remember being in my 20s and I had a lump under my arm and I went to my primary care doctor at that time and I spent, I asked to him, I was like, I'm concerned. I feel this lump under my arm. And he was like, oh, it's probably just like an ingrown hair. You're young. You're 20 something years old. You're fine. And I was like, so we're not going to check into this more. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, well, let's see if it goes away in a few, a few weeks. If it does, then it's what I thought it was and you're fine. And so then I remember asking him, I said, okay, when do I need to come back for another physical? And he was like, at your age, five years. And I was like, five years? That seems excessive. And I remember even then having that awareness, like this man doesn't really see me, nor does he mm -hmm. care about my health. And I s quickly switched to another 
um, or a compassionate doctor. And I think compassion is a big mm -hmm. thing that, that is missing from some, some fields. People feel like intelligence is all you need for certain fields, and it's so much bigger than that. And I think that compassion and care can go a long way, even with yoga. There's some people mm -hmm. who are great technically. They know the body, they know anatomy, and they know all the poses. They can say everything in Sanskrit, but they don't see people. And that's part of why we started this organization, because I've been in classes where I'm the teacher, there's 50 people in there, and I'm the only black person. Mm -hmm. And so for some folks, if that's their introduction to yoga, they might not ever come back. If they come in there and everyone is a size zero, everyone's doing acrobatics, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you're mm -hmm. like, where do, I, where do I fit in? Right. And someone is not even offering you something that can work with your body. They're just leaving you behind and you feel like you're glossed over. And right. so that's part of the reason why we created Black Yogis of South Florida. And why, excuse me, why we try to make our classes very accessible so that people can leave our classes feeling empowered mm -hmm. and not feeling discouraged like this is some elitist. You have to have a certain kind of physical level of fitness to be able to come on a mat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's important, that representation and that compassion. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. And that's one of the takeaways I took away from got from your class yesterday is that it was so inclusive. Like there were there was no body type, there was no personal type, there was no color, there was no nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just people. Mm -hmm. That's it. And that's all we need. Mm -hmm. and, and to be seen and heard is absolutely imperative, especially when we are talking about people's health. Yeah. We're not talking about, you know, buying a new car. We're talking about your health. And your health, without your health, you can do nothing. nothing. So if you're getting bad advice from somebody who just doesn't see you and just sees you at, as a number or whatever they see you as, and they're just going to do whatever they usually do with everyone else without even evaluating you, I think that is, that is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And that will never happen as long as a patient is standing in my office or you know, I send them to somebody like you, which I know that you will see them. Yeah. So yeah, important to me. How do you share that, that compassion with other doctors that are coming up under you? Like, what, what is your mission to, um, or if you have one, to like kind of have some understudies to make sure that they, that this is important. Like, this is why we exist. This is why we practice. Great question. You, you just asked me about what, what my, my influence coach, mm -hmm. my, my personal development coach calls um, magic. Mm -hmm. Right? What is your magic? What, is it, what, would, what would you do if you had all the money and all the time in the world? Right? What would mm -hmm. you do? It's called your magic. And that's my magic. That's exactly my magic. Mm -hmm. Right? Right now, we have an endowment at, this, at the Florida State University in my sister's name. It's called the Baby Pearl um, Foundation. Mm -hmm. Right? And in that foundation, we fund scholarships, but only to minority blacks, women that are looking for any spot or any type of career in healthcare. From nurses aides all the way up to, you know, what I believe I'm going to one day cause to happen, which is a black um, female um, surgeon general of the United States. That's my goal, 100%. And how I'm going to do that is to nurture and be a consultant for that community, that specific subset of the community. Mm -hmm. Black women who want to be doctors, nurses, surgeons, everything that has to do with healthcare, we need more of you in healthcare so that you are seen, mm -hmm. right? Heard and understood, yeah. right? So that's, you just touched on my magic, which is really <laughs> cool. That's what I'm going to do. And I was telling my wife about this recently, that once, you know, God gives me enough of, of everything else that we need so I can provide for them, which mm -hmm. he is doing that in an abundance right now, I'm going to work on my magic, and that's what I'm going to work on until I die. Mm. So thank you for that question. Of course, of course. Um, <laughs> you know I got another question. Are. You know, I'm not got about 10, but I'll go to, I'll go to this one. Talking to you, I like your questions. are great. She got good questions. She's very thoughtful. When you have a lot of um, passion and compassion, you want to, you know, you want to save the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we all have that, that heart to want to just do everything. Mm -hmm. How do you, um, what has been your journey with creating and enforcing boundaries and how do you practice your own self-care to ensure that you can show up in the best way for your patients and for your family? Outstanding question. Mm -hmm. Outstanding question. So I, I, I recently struggled with boundaries, 
especially when it's about, you know, when, from what you touched on it, from what I do is, is very important to, to me to be there for other people. And while I'm there for other people, it's not possible to also be there for your family. At the same time, it's just, sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, that caused me to have breakdowns in, you know, priorities as far as, you know, myself. That's the last person that gets fed when, for emotionally, when, when, when I'm giving myself to, you know, my, my, my energy to other people and then my family, I found myself being last, put it, being put last on the priority, which I thought was fine. As a black man, we're taught that, you know, it's what you do. You, uh, you man up, especially a, a, a black Haitian, a Haitian man. Um, this is what we do. Um, it didn't work. It just simply didn't work. And unfortunately, you know, not for, fortunately, um, I, I, I reached an end point and I had to seek mental, a mental health counselor, which I have to this day. Um, and he's excellent, thankfully. Um, that's helped me to keep myself together and prioritize myself, set boundaries respectfully. Um, I, sim I, I recently had to have a conversation with a good friend of mine who found it necessary to call me at all times of hours of working hours, incessant, you know, back and forth when it's time to, you know, when it's time to work. And it's, it was important to him, but I didn't feel that it, ne it needed to be addressed at the time. Before, I would just brood about it. But after, you know, taking care of my own self, you know, I, I realized that the conversation had to be had with love mm -hmm. and set the boundaries that, you know, this is not the way that we should handle this. And, you know, so now we're having these conversations, truthful conversations with love and respect, and it's working. And I'm doing a lot better. And I'm, and I'm, I'm now able to better serve my own patients because now everyone you know, people around me know what the boundaries are, you know, where, where I can, you know, how far, how, when it's time to contact, when it's time to talk, when it's time to, you know, approach. Because, um, you know, I give my number out to a lot of people. <laughs> but, yeah, that's a great question. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I now treat mind, body, and soul because it's all, you know, all important so I can be my best self because, again, I need to be around to cause that first black female Surgeon General, mm -hmm. you have good questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> NBC, CBS, ABC. Uh -huh. I got a question for you guys. I got, okay. a, <laughs> I got a question for you guys. Um, you both will be, um, I've, I've invited you both to, to um, put on an event for us mm -hmm. um, in, in a couple weeks on the 20th. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 20th of January mm -hmm. at, um, at 1 p.m. What do you expect to see? What, what can the people expect from you guys at this event um, the Black Yogis will put on for FCMW? I think um, you can expect an inclusive environment. So if you missed the Nike class, then you'll get a chance to feel some of our magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to feel included. Um, for those who came early to the class, they got a hug from either one yeah. of us or both of us. Yeah. Like we like to, you know, for those who like hugs, yeah. we like to give out hugs. Some people can feel welcome to, you know, you, it's like coming into someone's house and everyone's looking at you like, what you doing here? You know, versus like someone coming in and say, come on, get grab a seat. Yeah. Let me get you some water, like that kind of energy um, to make you feel comfortable. And so um, you can expect to have a class that might challenge you in some ways, but most importantly, will feel safe and supported. Um, an opportunity so that you can learn something new and walk away with something that I like to call in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. So that uh, when you find yourself going through stress, any kind of anxiety, when you find yourself feeling like you just need a moment to yourself, you'll, you'll leave our class with something that you can put in your toolbox that you can access at any time. Um, and then I also hope that you will leave making a new friend because uh, we try to encourage that. So like after class, you know, connecting with the person next to you or at least saying hi to us and we could be your new friend. Right. So um, connecting with more people so that you can know that we're not we're not here to walk this earth alone and we're not here to um, to have to, you know, carry every, the burdens of life on our own shoulders. So. So yeah, hopefully you'll walk, leave walking a little bit taller, not just because we help with your alignment and your posture, <laughs> but also just feeling more confident in yourself and being amazed at what your body can do. Mm -hmm. I hear that. And want to come back. I yeah. hear that. <laughs> I, hear, I, I hear from you, what I hear is value. 
you are adding value. When they come, when they, they will leave better than they came. They will leave happier. They will leave um, more emotionally uplifted. You're going to give them more than what they came with. So I, I see you guys as adding a lot of value to people's lives. Um, and it's, no, it's not an exaggeration to say that I think that you probably have saved a couple people's lives. Seriously. seriously. That's a big responsibility, huh? Well, I, I deal with it on a daily basis. So, you know, I'm not alone. So just because I have a white coat doesn't mean I'm the only one out here saving lives. You guys do it as well, but in a different manner. So, you know, that's, that's something that I respect and I, and I you know, you, you receive that because that is, that is, yes, it's a big responsibility, but it's one that you are already carrying, I believe, in my estimation. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, value. You guys add value, not just to the people who, again, like I said, not just the people that are in your class, but those people go out and affect other people. Mm -hmm. So there's a multiplier effect from what we do when we do it the right way with integrity. So. Mm -hmm. I really, I love that. I love that answer. Great. We look forward to it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't wait till it happens. I'm going to jump in this time. Okay, I'm gonna, awesome. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in. Can't wait to see it. Will that right. be your first time practicing? or? It will be my absolutely first time practicing. <gasps> what an honor. I, 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 I genuinely feel honored when I'm able to provide people with that right. first um, impression and experience on yoga because I know how precious it is. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm going, and that's going to be my first time practicing, and I can't wait. I can't wait to enjoy it and experience it and receive it. Awesome. All right? So we are going to let these young ladies go, but let me tell you, I am, I'm left even more impressed um, with the black yogis of South Florida, Kiana and Jasmine, than I was yesterday. Um, and yesterday I was pretty impressed. Um, getting to know them a little bit better and knowing exactly what um, they offer, I have no reservation that they're uh, an absolute um, positive point of contact for you um, here in South Florida. And I'm going to continue to send as many of my patients who are willing to receive their services to them. And I have no reservations about doing so. Um, once again, Dr. Cloak, um, Dr. G at FCMW, and I am going to continue to add information into this podcast, and hopefully you receive it and use it for good. Till next time.